off this list, in our number 10 spot, we have the Fairmont Banff Spring Hotel. This Canadian hotel is absolutely legendary, but despite the spooky tales, tourism remains as high as ever. This hotel was built in 1888 in order to encourage tourists and to sell train tickets, and while it certainly did just that, this chateau style hotel was only the icing on the cake to a trip to the gorgeous Rocky Mountains and all that waits in the Banff National Park. Through the years, though, several guests have had some haunting stories to tell, which included reports of ghost sightings. These ghosts are thought to reside in the hotel, and they include a bride who allegedly fell down the stone staircase during her wedding, which led to her untimely departure, or the legend of Sam the Bellman. This legend has it that Sam worked at the hotel until 1975, and before leaving, he claimed that he would come back to haunt the hotel. It is said that his spirit can be seen in the hotel, helping people with their bags. In our number 9 spot today, we have Zunantinich. This location sits deep in the jungles of Belize, located less than a mile from the border of Guatemala. It has an unbelievably rich history as it is an ancient Maya ruin that has been abandoned for the last thousand years. In 1890, this site had its modern discovery, and since then it has been an important site for archaeology, an amazing tourist attraction, but also it is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal. It is said that the site is haunted by a female ghost. She has black hair and glowing red eyes. Referred to as the Stone Lady, it is said that she was first spotted by one of the first research teams in the area in 1893, and since then she has been frequently seen by the tallest building complex called El Castillo. No one exactly knows the story behind the Stone Lady considering the history of this site, but many believe she may have been a part of a ritual sacrifice, which was a tradition and spiritual practice done by the ancient Maya civilization. In our number 8 spot today, we have Berg Elts. This German castle dates back to 1157, so it's no surprise that there are many myths and legends surrounding it. The most common tale is that of a young countess named Agnes. Agnes was betrothed or promised to another noble, but after meeting him, she called off their future wedding. Apparently, this guy was the worst, and also, even if he wasn't, no one could really blame her for calling off a wedding she didn't want to have. But of course, things quickly went awry. This noble guy was mad that she had rejected him, so the scorned lover laid siege to the castle. Agnes fought to defend her home, but she passed away during the battle. That is the story behind why her spirit is said to haunt the Berg Elts castle. Many say the strongest presence is felt in her former bedroom. It is said that her spirit is quite mournful, and apparently her battle armor and axe remain on display as well. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Eden Brown as Estate. This estate is located in Nevis, which is the smaller of the two islands that comprise the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. It is said that despite having just as much to offer, Nevis is often overshadowed by St. Kitts. That is, until people hear of this ghostly haunting. Eden Brown Estate is a former plantation that now lies in ruin. The estate was once owned by a businessman who was going to give the property to his daughter as a wedding present. Legend goes that on the wedding day, there was a very mysterious duel between the groom and his best man that ended up leaving both of the men dead. Because of this tragic happening on what should have been her wedding day, the businessman's daughter remained unmarried and alone for the rest of her life, which meant that when she passed, there was no one to leave the estate to. Now visitors of the estate report seeing the spirit of a reclusive woman as she roams about the grounds. Aside from this story, who knows what other kind of horrors and absolute tragedies that this place has seen. In our number 6 spot today, we have Bangar Fort. Bangar Fort is located in India, just 100 miles southwest of Delhi. This place is pretty much completely abandoned, as it is said to have had a curse placed on it. Apparently, many, many years ago, a sorcerer tried to woo a local princess, and when she rejected him, he got so upset that he decided that cursing this town was his only course of action. I just have to mention that none of these are a normal reaction to being rejected, and calling it an overreaction would honestly be an understatement. This fort now is closed to visitors after sundown because of all the spooky happenings that go on here. This fort is extremely beautiful, so it's no wonder the paranormal doesn't keep people out. People have reported having extremely strong feelings of an otherworldly presence, and even some have reported hearing voices that are seemingly coming from nowhere. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Whaley House. The Whaley House is located in San Diego, and it was built in 1857. The site that this family house was built on was actually the 
location of San Diego's first public gallows, so as you can imagine, that's a pretty good backstory for a haunted site. Right after moving in, Thomas Whaley reported that he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had been hanged at the gallows just four short years before the house was built. After moving in, the Whaley family began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, many of which actually happened inside of the house. The Whaley house is now a museum, and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. These paranormal occurrences are apparently often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. In our number 4 spot today we have Obvodny Canal. Obvodny Canal is located in St. Petersburg, Russia and this whole thing just really creeps me out. This man made canal was built in the late 18th century and ever since then there has been extremely strange occurrences at this location. Construction workers would complain of headaches, they would also sometimes even have random outbursts of violent behavior that was uncomfortable characteristic of them, but the craziest, most unsettling part is what has given this location full cursed status. Many of these people have attempted to take their own lives. Sadly, most of the attempts were successful, but the few people who have been saved have explained that they have no idea why they did it. They say that they didn't really have intentions beforehand, and some have even said that they felt some sort of invisible force pulling them into the water. Apparently there are some sinister souls that live beneath the surface of the water, and and there have even been reports of seeing a lady in white in the water before she suddenly disappears. Long story short, remind me to just never ever go here. In our number 3 spot today we have the Eastern State Penitentiary. The Eastern State Penitentiary is located in Philadelphia and of course it used to be a prison but it is now an abandoned and extremely haunted house. This prison used to house some pretty big profile prisoners such as Al Capone and Willie Sutton but it was different from the American prisons we are used to now. This is because this prison was entirely separate incarceration. The inmates would live, sleep, eat and everything else alone. When they were removed from their cells they would have hoods placed over their heads as well. Considering all we now know about how detrimental isolation is, this of course must have taken an immense toll on the prisoners. Beside this, there were also some pretty gruesome and horrible punishments in this prison, such as having prisoners tongues chained to their wrists. I'm honestly not even sure how you would do that, but apparently it was a thing. This prison now sees thousands of voluntary visitors every year, and there have been plenty of reports of some creepy paranormal happenings. These reports include seeing shadowy figures, hearing creepy laughter that doesn't belong to anyone living, and hearing footsteps throughout the prison. I feel like considering all that went on when this prison was active, it truly does make sense that this building would be a haunted one. In our number 2 spot today we have Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is located in England and was built around 1620 and it is a large building on 7,000 acres, which is obviously quite impressive. The tale that follows this haunted building is that of Lady Dorothy Dolly Townsend and her husband Viscount Turnip Townsend. I can't believe a couple with the nicknames Dolly and Turnip have an evil history, but unfortunately, they do. The story goes that Turnip kept Dolly locked up in the house, which is obviously just terrible and very cruel. After her passing, it's no wonder she decided to stick around and haunt the house. Apparently, there was a photo taken of her ghost in 1930, and it is said that no one has ever been able to prove it was a fake. So, all you photo experts out there, take a look and let me know what you think. A lot of the places on this list now serve as haunted houses, but apparently this one is still lived in by the Raynham family. Hence the name. In our number one spot today, we have Forsyth Park. One thing I didn't know is that apparently the entire city of Savannah, Georgia is a pretty haunted place due to the creepy tunnels that are located underneath the city. But one of the most notable, highly haunted places within the city is Forsyth Park. Apparently, there used to be a hospital across the street, and there would be autopsies performed in the tunnels below the park. I personally feel like autopsies are already creepy enough, so I'm not sure if conducting them in an underground tunnel was exceptionally necessary, but hey, I can't change the past. Because of this scary practice, the park has seen a lot of paranormal activity since these days, and it usually is the sort of place where one second you'll see a strange figure, but as soon as you blink or look away, it disappears just as quickly as it suddenly appeared. Well, starting off at number 10, the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, Oregon. Portland was one of the most dangerous ports in the United States during the early 19th century, and it was the epicenter of Shanghai, a form of it's crazy to think
Everything still happens today and tunnels are still the way to do it. According to the local lore, swinders preyed upon unsuspected men in the local salons, which were often outfitted with trap doors that deposited the victims directly into a network of underground tunnels. These men were supposedly held captive, drugged, and eventually transported to the waterfront where they were sold to ships as unpaid laborers, aka slaves. Some worked for several years before finding their way back home. The tunnels are said to be haunted by the aggrieved spirits of the captives who died in the dark recesses behind the city. Random facts, the practice of kidnapping men to work on ships came to be known as Shanghing because the ships that were sold to were often headed to East Asia. Number 9, Eastern State Penitentiary, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The castle-like Eastern State Penitentiary took solitary confinement to whole new levels when it was built in 1829. Prisoners lived alone, exercised alone, and ate alone. When inmates were left in a cell, a guard would cover his head with a hood so he wouldn't be seen. The prison had to abandon its solitary confinement system due to overcrowding from 1913 until it was closed in 1970. Although the forms of punishment did not get any less severe, I mean chaining an inmate's tongue to his wrists, that's just one example, a true story. The site's one of most haunted places in America right now, well it welcomes thousands of visitors every year, both for its museums and annual terror behind the wall celebration, which features six haunted attractions within the prison walls for Halloween. I mean, when you talk about an attraction inside of a prison, um, no thanks. Well, it was reported paranormal happenings have included dismembered laughter, shadowy figures, and pacing of footsteps. Uh Sorry, I, I thought I was hearing footsteps behind me right now. Okay, I'm pretty freaked out with this one, so let's move on to the next one. So next up, number eight, we have House of the Seven Gables, Salem, Massachusetts. Now, this house did not steal its name from the classic novel. In fact, it inspired the novel itself. Salem is known for its history of the famous witch trials, and that's where Sabrina Spillman lived. But it happens to be the birthplace of Nathaniel Hawthorne, who used this 17th century house as inspiration for his famous 1851 novel, The House of the Seven Gables. Aside from its beautiful yet spooky facade, the house is surrounded by paranormal activity and ghost sightings, all based on personal experiences of staff. Every October, the house offers spooky tours as well as weekly performances of two plays. The Legacy of the Hanging Judge and Spirit of the Gables. Would you guys see a play in a haunted town's haunted house? Coming in hot at number seven on this list, The Stanley Hotel. Hotel in Estes Park. If you've read or seen The Shining, you know the feeling of this often snowbound hotel. It's the location Stephen King based his Overlook Hotel upon. It may not look like the film unless you watch the 1990s made for TV movie version, which, uh, yeah, I don't think anyone has. I mean, just walking to your room can drain you. So, one stiff drink might have you seeing ghosts or a couple kids chanting, Red Rum, Red Rum. Number six, we're bringing you Red Onion Saloon Skagway, Alaska, established in 1898. As a brothel for miners during the Klondike Gold Rush, Alaska's Red Onion Saloon, it had a feature that set it apart from other bordellos. It used dolls to help run its business, so always a good sign, right? Well, every day, 10 dolls would be placed on the bar downstairs, each one representing one of the ladies working in the upstairs room. A customer would choose one of the dolls, at which point it would lay down on the bar to indicate that particular workers were occupied. When the customers came back downstairs, the doll would be returned to her sitting position to let other potential clients know that she was available. We'll fast forward to 2019 when the Red Onion Saloon still operates as a bar and restaurant, yet the dolls are still on display and it offers tours of the upstairs rooms which are preserved as sort of like a mixed shaped brothel museum. As if these dolls weren't creepy enough, there were reports of Lydia of former madame of a brothel haunting the site, complete with cold spots and lingering spells of perfume, rafting through the walls. I mean, all creepiness aside, I'm more curious about the, how this place got named Red Onion. I mean, they could have came up with any other name. Well, let me know what you guys would call this in the comment section below. Give me a name. All right, we're halfway on this list. Number five, we got RMS, Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. This retired ocean liner sailed the Atlantic Ocean from 1936 to 1967. During the first three 
three years at sea, the Queen Mary carried Hollywood celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor. Her days as a luxurious ship were short lived. In 1939, she was stripped of her amenities and began her second life as a grey ghost, a World War II troop ship. At the conclusion of the war, she was restored to her former glory and traversed the Atlantic for nearly two more decades. On Halloween 1967, the Queen Mary departed on her last cruise, eventually docking in Long Beach, California, her final resting place. The ship is reportedly haunted by the spirits of those who died aboard, such as the young sailor who was crushed to death by a door in the engine room and a crew member who was murdered in cabin B340. Number 4 Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast in Fall River. So this location came up on nearly every search on our quest to find this top 10 list for you guys. Well you've likely heard of the children's rhyme Lizzie Borden took an axe gave it to her mother 40 wax. When she saw it, what she had done she gave her father 41. Well you can not only visit the scene of that famous 1892 double you can also sleep at the Borden's home, eat their last meal, Johnny Cakes, a thick cornmeal pancakes and eggs, in case you were wondering, and spend the last nights in the bedroom where the bodies of Lizzie's stepmother Abigail was found. Someone who stayed there said, I can attest, this home painstakingly furnished to look exactly as it did on the morning of the well, that will creep you right out. Better though, the 175 year old property hosts up to 20 overnight guests, in which some of them for some reason, it's a tradition when you go to this place, they will actually whip out a Ouija board. I mean, I'm not down for Ouija, that is a real life situation that can happen, and let alone whipping out a Ouija board in a haunted place. Finally down to number three on this list, we have Crescent Hotel, Erica Springs, Arkansas. Since its construction in 1886, the Crescent Hotel has served several purposes luxury resorts, conservatory for young women, junior college, but the strangest mark on its history came in 1937 when it got a new owner, Norman G. Baker. Baker was a millionaire inventor who decided to pose as a doctor despite having no medical training and turned the hotel into a hospital that can cure cancer. Well, he was eventually found out and he was ran out of town. Although reports say that his spirits found its way back to the site and found some other wordedly company too. The now operating Crescent Hotel is said to be haunted by at least eight ghosts ranging from a five-year-old girl to a bearded man wearing Victorian clothing. One ghost is enough for me, never mind eight of them, and children ghosts, I think those are the absolute scariest kind. And number one, we have Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Western West of Virginia. This foreboding asylum began construction in 1858 and opened to patients in 1864. The massive structure was designed by architect Richard Andrews to maximize sunlight and fresh air it was believed that the building itself would serve as a healing environment. It was designed for 250 people housed and 2400 patients in crowded conditions. I mean that's a pretty big range going from 250 to 2400. Patients were physically restrained and often given inhumane treatments such as the electroshock therapy and lobotomies which was very popular back in the day. After more than a century in operation, the facility was forced to close in 1994 which when you think about it wasn't too long ago. Within the last 30 years years and it was due to the reforms in mental health and treatment and the deterioration of the building. Hundreds of patients died during the asylum tenure and scores of guests and ghost hunters have claimed they're seeing shadowy figures roaming around the facility. Number 10. Nakagasuku Hotel In 1975, a world fair was planned to be held on the island of Okinawa, commemorating the American return of the island to Japan three years prior. Located on the Motobu Peninsula, this was a high profile event to be sure, and one businessman from the capital of Naha saw a great opportunity for profit. The businessman chose to build the hotel with an excellent view of the Pacific Ocean and East Chinese Sea, and however, construction was was immediately hindered by warnings from monks that the land they were building on was supposedly the home to a great deal of sacred locations and burial grounds. These warnings were ignored, but as accidents during construction began to increase, progress was halted as the workers began to fear that the build itself was cursed. In an attempt to encourage the workers to return to their jobs, the businessman made a show of living on the premises until the project was finished. Three nights later, the man lost his his mind and disappeared. Do you think that you could stay for more than three days? It's 
pretty beautiful, so long as you don't mind the angry ghosts and demons. Number 10. The Lizzie Borden House A bed and breakfast located at 232nd Street is home to one of America's most haunted and mysterious homes. The Lizzie Borden House gets its reputation from the unsolved murder of Lizzie Borden in 1892. She's one of the most infamous true crime figures known for killing her father and stepmother with a hatchet. There's a, a twisted rhyme about this incident, but I'm not gonna sing it here. I'm not getting cursed on YouTube. So on August August 4th, 1892, Lizzie's stepmother of 27 years was struck 19 times while her father, Andrew, was hit 11. Although Lizzie Borden was acquitted and found not guilty, the dark history draws in crowds every night for its nightly tour of the premises. The Lizzie Borden room, the infamous room where these horrors took place, is requested the most for paranormal overnighters. Some 1408 stuff, would you? Who do this? Who does this? And it's not like you can just, you know, enjoy a lovely all-inclusive breakfast, but uh, there's also the nightly house ghost tour, the uh, ghost hunt, and all of that, which attracts fans of horrors every night of the year. Number 8. The Chu Mansion When Chu Jinshan and Chu Wei King moved to Shanghai, they did what anyone would do with a suddenly gained fortune. Build a big old house smack dab in the middle of Shanghai and threw a bunch of animals inside. And not just any old animals, they kept tigers, crocodiles, and peacocks on the property, building a massive garden for their captive creatures to prowl. Their decadence was unmatched in the entire city, which makes their sudden disappearance all the more mysterious. The animals were sold off or eaten, and half of the mansion was converted into a middle school during World War II. However, in 2002, the land was bought to make way for a commercial complex. During this time, a nurse by the name of Li Fei claimed that she'd had to treat several construction workers for what were described as bite wounds. The workers recovered, but they were too terrified to return to the site. Later, several blogs described an attack in the area, as a mason attacked his manager with a hammer claiming that lizards were making him do it. Then, only a month later, a woman living near the building claimed to see a dragon along the arm of one of the construction cranes. And if that wasn't enough, on several forums, employees of a hotel across the street from the building claimed to see ghostly animals leering in the distance. So yes, you could knock on that door. Just make sure you get your hand back. Number 7. The Haunted Ballroom Ah, uh, now we're talking. This is one I for sure would want to check out. I would definitely moonwalk in a haunted ballroom. The house, if you want to call it that, is a mansion slash castle that was built between 1871 and 1887 for a New Zealand politician, William Larnack. Like any other Disney castle, you have about a 3,000 square foot ballroom. Larnack gave his 21 year old daughter a ballroom for her birthday. Here you go, Kate, and now, you know, go make a friend or two. Good luck. What would you want a ballroom for? It's just the worst gift. What happened to ponies? Well, Kate, sadly, passed away due to uh, typhoid cancer, but the death doesn't get in the way for her. Apparently, the spirit of the youngster is still said to haunt the ballroom. Number 6. Luang Sewu Designed by Cosman Citroen, Luang Sewu, which translates to a thousand doors, was the center of operations for the NIS, the first railway company in the Dutch East Indies. The complex is a collection of four small buildings and was a fairly beautiful, if nondescript, building when the Japanese army invaded in 1942. Under their command, the building was converted into a brutal dungeon where all manners of horrific war crimes were carried out by the Japanese imperialist forces. Retaken by the Indonesian army, the complex fell into disrepair, its white paint beginning to crumble and the facade falling away to a much more sinister disposition. Legends began to circulate of the ghosts of decapitated prisoners searching for their heads, and a vampiric mother resurrected to prey upon the living, making her nest in the rafters. All of this meant that these thousand doors would have trouble opening for any business other than historical preservation. In that case, do you think you'd be willing to knock on one of them? Number 5. Edinburgh Castle In Scotland's capital city, I I've been there a handful of times and it's one of my favorite places to visit. It's uh, got a nice little castle, uh, this uh, Edinburgh Castle. Of course, you have to visit it every time that you go, it's, it's a real castle. 
half workout. Uh, some of these parts are just chilling. You can really feel the haunt in the air. And these rooms date back to more than 900 years, so the walls have seen a few fortnights. Uh, sightings of colonial prisoners from the American Revolutionary War are common, so that's terrifying. As well as French prisoners from the Seven Years' War. If you're thinking about visiting, perhaps the ghost of the wandering dog in the castle's cemetery will convince you to stay a night. Number 4. Leap Castle Going from Scotland to Ireland, the ancient history of Ireland is steeped in blood, and there's no better place which better exemplifies this than Leap Castle. Constructed between the 13th and 15th centuries, the castle was originally known as Leap of the O'Bannons. Subject to the O'Carroll clan, a number of power struggles were had as various groups attempted to vie for the castle. Two brothers of the O'Carroll clan turned on one another, and in an event that would be known as the Bloody Chapel, one would slay the other in the middle of a service, running him through with a sword in front of their family. Later, it would be passed on to the Darby family. Now, Mildred Darby would frequently hold seances in the castle, leading to the stone walls becoming home to all manners of ghosts, spirits, and worse, a reputation. Some of these ghosts included the Red Lady, who stalked through the halls with a dagger, and two youths, one who fell from the battlements, and the other still looking for her sister. Number 3. Ram Inn Also doubling as a functioning pub located in England, the inn has been owned and operated by many folks since the 1100s. The ancient Ram Inn has been investigated by years of paranormal researchers. Shows like Ghost Adventures, Most Haunted, you name it. They've all done paranormal research at the ancient Ram Inn. And by research, I mean they just kind of stood around for a bit in the dark and taking notes. I could never do that, and legend has it that the energy from Stonehenge apparently feeds the property's paranormal power. Not to mention, the backyard is also home to a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. Stonehenge feeding power, I mean that's one way to save on your electricity bill. Number 2. The Poveglia Island Asylum Ah, Poveglia, a lovely little island just outside of the city of Venice. Well, good luck getting there, because it's completely closed to the public. Fairly unnoticed until 1776, the Madristro alla Sanita took control of the island, using it as a checkpoint for seafaring goods headed to the city proper. If you remember your Euro history class, you probably know where this is going. In 1793, the island was turned into a massive quarantine zone for the bubonic plague. What buildings did remain were then transformed into an asylum for the insane in the 1920s. Apparently, even with a doctor that supposedly experimented on their patient's brains before leaping from the building's tower in 1930, driven mad by the ghosts of his victims. The asylum was open for about 44 years before it was closed in 68. Well, there have been attempts to reopen the island as a park, none have really been successful, but honestly, I, I think I'd rather just not go trick or treating in that neighborhood. It kind of sounds like a rough part of town. Number one, the Queen Anne Brick Mansion. Heading over to Georgia for this haunted mansion. When I say mansion, I mean Hounting of Hill House type mansion, not quite a, like a Will Smith mansion. You know, in Savannah's Columbia Square, the Queen Anne Brick Mansion was initially built in 1892 for William and Anne Kehoe and their 10 kids. After a few deaths took place in the house, the building was converted into a bed and breakfast, and since 1992, guests have reported hearing footsteps and sounds of kids playing. I wouldn't want that at a regular bed and breakfast, let alone a haunted one. I would just like to sleep. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Colip Island. I'll be honest, this is a place that despite the spooky tales is probably still on many people's travel destinations list because it is so beautiful. Like much of Thailand, it truly is seemingly idyllic. When it comes to the haunting scene here, we turn to those who inhabit the island, the Chow Lei people. They claim to share their island with the whole host of spirits that they call the Hatao. You would think that a ghost filled island would keep people away, but they've found their own way to keep these spirits appeased, and that is by offering them strawberry pop and cupcakes. I mean, apparently it pays to be a spirit. Sounds pretty awesome. You get to chill on an island and you get poppin' cupcakes. Despite the incredible scenery and the amazing hospitality of those who are local to the island, many people report feeling some sort of uneasy presence on Kolip Island. Number nine, Watsin Suk Hell Garden. Gardens are supposed to be peaceful. It's supposed to be a place to grow, reflect, you know, swat bees for hours on end, all that good stuff. But when it comes to the Watsin 
Sukhel Garden, you won't be finding any piece whatsoever. This one's a little odd, a little spooky. Thailand is very spiritual, and this specific garden is home to hundreds of sculptures, each depicting the horrors that are awaiting in Buddhist hell. Yeah, they're very scary to look at. Unlike other gardens in Thailand, this one was built quite recently, believe it or not. The Hell Garden was built in 1986. Now, the idea is to keep you from committing any sins, and I gotta admit, they nailed it. Yeah, pretty much did the best they could. Olivia and I like to walk through graveyards for fun sometimes, so I don't know. I personally would love to walk through this. Would you do it? In our number eight spot today, we have Mei Ram Phung Beach. For this one, we are taking a trip to the eastern coast of Thailand to the Rayong province. Here lies this beach, which attracts tourists from all over the world. Earlier this year, the shores of this beach were actually hit with the results of an oil spill, but that isn't the most frightening thing that's happened here. Apparently, this area saw a few people who lost their lives in the water, and these horrible incidents happened quite close together. Since then, people have reported a sort of uneasy feeling as they've visited the beach, and some have even claimed to have left feeling haunted and have not been able to shake the feeling. Number seven, Kokam Noe Ghost Island. Love the name, Ghost Island. Really gets to the point for this next one here. I like it. Ghost Island, Kokam Noe is located in the eastern gulf of Thailand. Now it's close to the Konbury province. There is a plethora of reasons why this island is for sure haunted. Let's list them. During World War II, American soldiers constructed a base on the island. The deep waters surrounding the islands made it a pretty ideal stop for large warships. Now, unfortunately, there were swarms of mosquitoes that were also sharing the same island. So a great amount of those soldiers died and had to be buried on Koh Nam Noi Island. Now today, there's a Muslim cemetery on the one side and a Chinese cemetery on the other. All things considered, I couldn't imagine a more peaceful resting place. In our number six spot today, we have Ayuta, a historical park. This national park is a place with incredibly rich history, and it is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The site was founded in 1350, and it became the second capital of Siam after Sukhothai. The site ended up being destroyed by the Burmese in the 18th century, but despite these ruins, even today you can still get the sense of how wonderful this place once was. With history like this, it's definitely no surprise that this place is said to be haunted. The most popular haunting story from this location is in regards to the ghost of Pu Sam Fao Sap, who is said to guard the city's treasures. Even Prince Bira of Siam reported seeing this ghostly apparition, and not many people can say that they have a royal backing them up when it comes to their paranormal claims. Number five, River Kwai Bridge. I don't like bridges in general. I have no idea how they work structurally. It freaks me out when I look at them and to think about them. When it comes to Hellfire Pass, no chance, not, not gonna do that one. First of all, big fan of the name. These are all scary names. They hint towards the impending doom. I kinda like it. The River Kwai Bridge saw brutal combat during World War II, but the Death Railway alias actually comes from the dark history during the initial construction of the River Kwai Bridge, where a countless number of prisoners or tradesmen all lost their lives while laying the 260 mile long track. The track runs from Thailand to Burma and almost all of it is deemed Haunted, so yeah, big note from me. Hard, hard pass on this pass. In our number four spot today, we have Tui Watana Deserted House. If you've seen Final Destination, the vibes that this spooky abandoned house is giving will definitely be a little familiar. Legend goes that a group of friends entered this house once to have a little fun in a place they probably shouldn't have been. You know, young people, everyone did stupid stuff. But it turns out there might be a higher price to pay when it comes to this place. Since then, it is said that this group of friends has seen members of the group dying in some strange or very elaborate circumstances. One passed away in a car accident, the other in a house fire. It is said that the remaining members of the group believes that they may have been the target of a vengeful spirit that was angry that they entered that house. I hope they all stay far away from roller coasters and tanning beds for sure. And maybe just don't drive behind any trucks carrying wood just to be safe. Number three, the Southern Unique. Commonly referred to as, you guessed it, Ghost Tower, the Southern Unique is a colossal unfinished skyscraper and it's gonna stay that way for probably ever. Upon first glance, this looks like any city, right? Cranes sticking out of the building, there's scaffolding just waving like a flag in the wind, it's the usual. Now, not all these construction zones, however, have this many reports of paranormal activity. This building looks massive. You stare up from the streets of downtown Bangkok and you get 
get the chills. Even though construction began in the 90s, the building still has not been completed post-financial crisis. Now, one major incident that deems the Southern unique as haunted took place in December 2014. A photographer snuck into the building to take photos of the sunrise, but instead found the body of a Swedish man on the 43rd floor. It was determined that the man had sadly taken his own life. In our number two spot today, we have the Bioke Sky Hotel. The haunting tales of this location can be attributed to the significant number of workforce deaths that have been reported here. During the construction of this luxury hotel, it is said that three of the workers fell to their rather untimely deaths. Now, this sky-high tower is said to be haunted by the souls of those who fell. Both staff of the hotel as well as guests staying there have reported seeing things like shadows lurking through the hallways. It doesn't stop here, however. Some guests have even reported their items being moved seemingly on their own, and there's also been reports of just a general feeling of uneasiness, a feeling like they're being watched. It truly gives me shivers just thinking about it, but I'm sure stories like this only make this hotel more desirable for those interested in all things paranormal. And finally, number one, Bong Pu Shoe Factory. We'll finish this list off with an abandoned shoe factory located in Samut Prakan. The factory suffered this freak accident that sadly led to many casualties of workers. The air compressor malfunctioned in some way and ultimately it erupted. It was quite fast and very tragic, but the factory owner continued business afterwards Anyways, after that point, workers one by one ended up leaving. They were quitting their jobs on the spot, all claiming to have encountered the spirits of the previous workers who had lost their lives. Now, word spread quite fast, so business slowed down drastically. The owner as well sadly took their own life in the same factory. So it's no surprise that the building remains untouched still to this day. Mm -hmm.